All right, the man, Steve Richards from Taproot. What's going on? Not much. How are you? Good, man. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. This is a very big year for Taproot, uh, not only with the new record Scissors, but the uh, the best of B-Sides release, uh, the reunion dates. I think there was a, what is it, a string of three sold-out shows uh, at the machine shop. A bunch of the other shows coming yeah. up, or uh, some of them have low ticket warnings. Uh, but perhaps most notably, I would be remiss if I didn't jump right in and talk about the epic jump off of the balcony uh, at the Forge the other night just outside Chicago. Yeah, that's kind of par for the course. That was the, that was the biggest one in a long time, but... I've done way bigger before, but I'm I'm old and fat, so I'll go I'll go I'll go I'll go I'll go, I'll, I'll go easy on the on the guys. Hey, well, it's it's cool, man. It was like uh, you know, seeing the videos, like old school vibes, you know, and and uh, not a whole lot of bands aren't quite as crazy as they used to be. I don't think. Yeah, that's kind of just me. It's kind of funny. Uh, we've got a band called Heartsick that's opening a lot of the shows, and he's kind of younger and does the same stuff i used to do crowd surfing and starting a pit i'm still starting a pit and stuff but he he doesn't jump off balconies he's on a wire so i've got to i've got to try to top him <laughs> that uh heart sick that's the band uh, that used to be called no life uh, right that uh alfonso or whatever is the singer i, I know i haven't seen him in a long time yep. but i uh, used to see that guy yep, frequently Alfie. Yeah, no, they're they're really really good, and uh, he's actually been coming out and doing Elias's part on favorite song, so that's been really cool. Oh, nice! Well, I want to get into all that. The new album, Scissors, uh, just released a couple of weeks ago. I think uh, September 29th. And the way I understand it, this was originally supposed to be it was supposed to be a Taproot record following episodes. I think which came out in like 2012. Then when the band went on hiatus, it turned into it was going to be like a solo record, and then. Obviously, here we are now, and it's back as a Taproot album. Is that correct? Yeah, you got it right. Um, I wrote probably 80% of it while we were touring on the episodes and stuff like that, like a decade ago. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot, of it's, a lot of it's pretty old, even though it's new to people. Um, but yeah, we, we took a slight hiatus, obviously, for quite some time. We all did the family thing and jobs and all that. Um, but... I was just going to release it on my own be like, Hey, you know, I've been sitting on these for a long time. Maybe a couple thousand people might want to hear them, whatever through, you know, social media and all that. But Phil was like, nah, no. Cause he's had the songs the whole time. And, right. you know, we used to jam them and the, used to jam them in the band on tour. And so he's had the songs and he's like, no dude, you wrote this to be Taproot's next record. It's going to be Taproot's next record, not just a solo release as Scissors. So that's why it's called Scissors. I was just going to go by that. Not Steven of Taproot. What would he do? <laughs> so, well, in one of these, songs, I'm kind of, sorry, go ahead. Go for it. Uh, I was just going to say, I was kind of like, I, switched my name to scissors that was going to be my you know whatever nickname because it's my initials and that was my hockey you know nickname growing up so i was just going to kind of go by that instead of like i said steve from taproot but um that's why the album's called that is because that's what i was going to release it under but it's now a taproot record which is pretty damn exciting is that uh that's the only reasons for the scissors title i recall in another interview you uh you had a, a different uh, answer as to why it was called Scissors. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was going to be called Scissors just based on my nickname, but I did add the I. And before all of this, like, I don't want to get into it, but, you know, whatever it's called, the he, them, they, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. I jokingly said that I was a sci-fi lesbian. <laughs> so that was before. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, why the eye that's, that's why incredible the man in the back. yeah like that's I, fucking you know, hilarious i wouldn't mean to i wouldn't mean to offend anyone right now but that's well, what i was going by before everything hit the fan hey i think that's uh that's the story you should keep man that's great uh one of the songs i think it's the the uh the one with the the country singer that was written back in 2007 though right so that song's been around for a, a very very long time that you've had yeah, that's been around a long time, and I thought the chorus was so cool lyrically that I ended up like trademarking the lyrics to that. And then Hallmark doesn't take suggestions or whatever, but I might try to figure out a way to release a card because I think uh, I don't want to give it away, but you know, it could be very special to give to someone very special. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I, I know you had said you wanted to do that kind of thing, and uh, 
I I actually uh, there's a, a family friend that I have. He does uh, he does all of the um, artwork and stuff for a lot of the like American greetings cards or whatever. So uh, that'd be that'd oh, be really? cool. If, yeah, that'd be crazy though if uh, you know uh, the singer of Taproot was responsible for a whole new line of cards. Man, that'd be something. That would be something. Get me in touch with them. I'll split the royalties. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, so how did this uh, this whole reunion come together, though? Obviously, you said Phil has known most of these songs for a long time, but how did 2023 end up, I guess, you know, becoming the year of Taproot, so to speak? Uh, it started with uh, the Blue Ridge Rock Fest offer, kind of just came our way, and, you know, we've been doing one-offs here and there, maybe only like three in the past, you know, 10 years. Or whatever. Yeah. But uh, we got offered that show, and we were like, you know why not and you know jared was available so we're like sweet you know original lineup minus one but uh so we planned on doing that and then once it turned into the taproot record rather than me just kind of wiping my butt and throwing it out there uh we ended up doing the machine shop booking those and that's when we did the release and then after those sold out so quick you know people started hitting us up like hey why don't you come here why don't you come here so we're just doing the weekend warrior stuff. You know, we can't leave our families, you know, for two, three weeks at a time or whatever. So we're just doing, you know, three or four days on the weekends and stuff and coming back home to the kids and I'm taking them to school in the morning, but tomorrow we leave again. Yeah. Where, uh, where are you at this weekend? Uh, well, it's kind of weird tomorrow. We're going to be leaving kind of late, and I'm going to Grand Rapids to kind of do my portion of the video shoot, even though we already pretty much have most of the video done. I'd have to get my close-ups and my ugly-ass face singing the words, whatever. <laughs> um, but so I'm going to do that in the afternoon, and then we have – I'm riding with Jared. We have like a 13-hour drive to Green Bay is the next show. So after whatever I do tomorrow in the afternoon, then we have a 13-hour drive, and then we have to get up and play the show. <laughs> oh wow busy busy uh you mentioned yeah. earlier the uh the uh song with uh, elias from non-point on it favorite song how did that uh come to be with getting him on the record <clears throat> um it was one of those bridges that i like i felt i could have done something but since day one it kind of seemed like it lent itself to having someone else and it was kind of weird I had two, three people in mind. Elias was clearly the easiest one to choose. Um, but, you know, I asked if there was any random people that fans might think were cool. And it literally came back, you know, like 80% was Elias. So I was like, perfect wow. fit. Yeah. I know how to get contact to Rob. So I contacted Rob and then he got me in touch with Elias. Elias was more than happy to do it. He rocked it like real quick. You know, all I had to do is have him change two words. I love the part. Wow. Who were, just out of curiosity, who were some of the other uh, suggestions from the fans? Oh, God. Um, obviously, like, Mike Shinoda. That oh, would never happen. Sure. Um, I was briefly in touch with Richard from Filter. Oh, that would have been cool. Um, would have been different, for sure. Yeah, I can't hit those good. high notes, yeah. so whatever. <laughs> I mean, Elias does pretty high ones, too. That's why I have Alfie Alfonso come out and do them, because I don't want to sing that scratchy that high for that long. Yeah. So I'll just I'll dig in the low harmonies. I'll take those. <laughs> well, when you go, uh, you know, since since this record has really been, been in the works for, I don't know, 15 years or whatever, uh, you know, I just had Saliva on this show a few days ago, and you know, their record just came out, they, but they had most of it done in, in 2020, so three years ago. And, you know, but with this being so much longer than that, when you go to finally put this record together, because I, I think you said uh, in another interview that you started uh, recording these initially in like 2016 or something. Um, mm -hmm. But when it's been so long do you, and you're starting to put everything together, are, are you, you know, have you had enough time to work on the songs to where you're like, this is you know, this is what I want to do. Are there any songs that you pulled like from your back catalog and you're like, uh, we got to tweak this, we got to tweak that. Or, or did you pretty much already have everything, you know, ready to go or when, when you were, t when it was time to put this whole thing together? Yeah, I, I pretty much had everything ready to go. That's why it took so long was because I could only work maybe four hours a week at like five thirty in the morning. So it took me forever and ever and ever. And then luckily I had all the guitar parts and drum parts done before I had a huge uh, 
accident, which kind of screwed my right arm up and I can't feel half of my arm still, but at least I trust it for playing guitar. Um, but so luckily I had all that done before recording the bass tracks. And luckily I only used the two fingers that I can feel to play <laughs> bass. So I got to wrap that up, but it took so long because yeah, I could only work X amount of hours, you know, and then I figured out the math and over six years of only like 16 hours a month, like it adds up to, you know, like literally what it would have taken for the band to have done it together just in, you know, like two months, 16 hour days, you know, sure. stuff like that. It kind yeah. of worked out, it worked out even. So it was kind of crazy because I just, I'd go at 530 in the morning. And that's the crazy thing too, is a lot of people are like, oh, the vocals are so good and so great. And I'm like, Ugh. those were, I, I didn't really sit down and sing songs like, trying to perfect them most of them are just scratch tracks like that i just laid down to get to know the songs and that's what we went with because we just had to kind of get it out there and they're good enough but they're literally just scratch vocals <laughs> but isn't that so great i i feel like you know a lot of new stuff that comes out today it's so fucking over polished and you know I, I miss some of that rawness that you know older bands used to have and and uh it's just a, a totally different landscape you know i had uh a while ago, I had Josh from Buck Cherry on, and, and he, uh, you know, was talking about how bands today, uh, they're just, they're not as dangerous as they once were, and not that, you know, having raw vocals is dangerous, but you know what I mean? The things are so different now, yeah. and, and uh, you know, it it's, it's nice to, to hear that. I, I do get tired of all this, uh, you know, super polished stuff, you know, I miss just, just rock and roll, man. Just give me rock and roll. Absolutely, and that's the, you know, like... I literally just sat down and did stuff like I'm so not like I'm self-taught everything. Like I've never really learned anything about music. I don't know anything theory or even like, I don't even know my tunings because I customize my own tunings just to how I like it. Luckily my guitar techs have it written down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, good. Like when I, I, when I went in the studio, I've worked there before, but I don't, they have so much stuff. I didn't know how to like repatch stuff in and then they changed boards halfway through and I'm like, ah, so I just get it to where I could make something record and then go like, so considering how much, uh, work I put into it, it was very like, I'd listen to it in my car and be like, Oh, this sounds awesome. But then, you know, people would be like, that's a little too rip your face off. You know, you need some depth to it. Sure. So, um, Luckily, uh, a guy named Matt LaPlante got in there and kind of fixed everything for me as far as EQ and kind of, you know, mastering it. So he did a great job to help out at the end. So, Well, you know, I had uh, Drowning Pool on yesterday and, and Saliva the other day, and they're touring together. And, and we were, you know, because that tour, they're doing, you know, big theaters and, and selling some of them out. And, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's like uh, it feels like right now there's – uh, a bit of a revival or a resurgence, if you will, of a lot of these late nineties, early two thousands bands, uh, rock and metal bands. And, you know, there's a whole new wave yeah. of bands now that, you know, call themselves like new metal revivalists and, you know, bands like dropout Kings and stuff like that. And it's, uh, it's crazy. A lot, a lot of these older bands seems to be trending, which, you know, I mean, this is my kind of stuff. So I'm like, this is fucking awesome, you know, but do you, do you feel the same way? Yeah. Yeah, um, multiple levels, you know, like we'll make jokes, you know, when you go to shows or play shows now, it's always like, oh, my dad got me into you guys. And it's like, oh, well, you know, it's about that time where all our kids, you know, are kind of forced what we listen to, even though people progress and whatever, it still, you know, brings back memories and, you know, true pasts for a lot of people. So the new metal revival is definitely right now, you know, kind of like clothes kind of come and go and then trends come back. I hear Jinko's coming back, but I haven't seen anyone. I, wearing I keep yet. hearing, I've heard um, that for a couple of years now, but I've never seen, I've never seen anybody out in the wild wearing Jinko's. Yeah. I mean, either not yet. Um, that might be so, something and then, could, could afford to not come <laughs> back though. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't think I could pull those off anymore, but, um, <laughs> another thing too, I think it was, I think it was Jared or Phil, um, kind of made perfect sense of it that like, you know, new metal when it kind of started was absolutely a sound of music and stuff. But as it comes full circle, it's more of like a period of time in people's lives a lot of us, you know, kind of went different routes to sound different and figure our sounds out and stuff. But to him, new metal is actually just a time frame more than, you know, just a lump of band. 
Well, you mentioned uh, earlier this this whole you know reunion thing kind of getting kicked off with the the Blue Ridge uh, offer, which you know uh, prior to all this controversy, uh, you know it, it seems like that that was like their thing, you know, and and I mean they kind of came out of nowhere a few years ago, and they're getting all these bands to you know do these reunion sets or, or getting European bands to do you know just a, a one. This is going to be an exclusive U.S. show or. Someone's going to play a whole record in its entirety, whatever. Um, and I, I think in another interview you were talking about, because uh, I think you were playing, because uh, you guys didn't end up playing, right? You were on one of the days that got canceled. We were on, yeah, not the first day. All the other days got canceled. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because <laughs> I think you had mentioned yeah. uh, in another interview about um, trying to bury the hatchet with uh, Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit, of course, uh, and maybe even, you know, jump on stage with them. Uh, but obviously uh, that never happened. But is that does that beef still exist? I, I I think you've said it never existed on your side, just on his end. But uh, have you guys talked or anything, or you know, did you have any plans for for uh, to do anything together at Blue Ridge? No, like you said, I, I've never had an issue whatsoever. I still continue to be a Limp Biscuit fan even after the message. Um, Steve Fred Durst, hey man, he fucked up. You don't ever bite the hand that feeds in this business, bro. And your fucking manager so up as a fucking idiot, loser motherfucker going nowhere. You have just chosen that path. Took you under my wing, brought you to my house. Fucking talk about your ass on radio on press. And you embarrass like me and Interscope family. Your association with the biscuit doesn't exist. Your manager slings our name around. He's going to be blackballed and probably be erased. And you will too. He's a fucking idiot. You're going to fucking learn from this time right here. I hope you let your band know that you just fucked yourself. You need to be associated with somebody in this business. You need something to get you out there and put you out there and believe in it. Now you got enemies. And you're fucking yourself already. Tell your friend that. Don't fucking show up at my shows because if you do, you're going to get fucked. Alright? You and your fucking punk ass, man. You call your fucking manager, David Men of Vistes, whatever. Ask him what he's done and doing. You're, you're a fucking dumb motherfucker. You're learning right now exactly how to ruin your career before it gets started. All the luck, brother. Fuck you. And I understand where he was coming from. Not a lot of people do, because he did do a lot for us and help us out. Um, and was trying to get us a, a record deal. It just turned into a demo deal, which wasn't a record deal. And at that point, we'd already started talking to other record labels who were offering deals. So, you know, he felt betrayed, and I understand that. Um, but we never meant to, like, do anything to hurt him or upset him. And I, I think that probably only lasted for maybe a year or so, just talking crap about us. But I'm sure he's over it. I mean, he's doing fine. They've been doing fine well without us. And he's got other bands under his roster that he's helped out too. So um, I've only been really appreciative. He, he was great to us and myself personally. You know, I got to go stay with him in L.A. and got to go to the significant others uh, like meeting where they play it for all the record execs, you know? So I got oh, to no do kidding. some really cool stuff with them. I didn't mean to screw him over. I get why he was mad. Um, but like you were saying, you know, I used to go when they were in town, I'd always go out and sing stuck with them. So I was kind of thinking like, wow, that would be kind of, it wouldn't help them having me come out on stage. But I think, you know, as far as press and stuff, it would be kind of cool for them as well as us just to kind of be like, oh, look, they're back, you know, they're, they're doing fine and everything's cool. And Steve only screwed it up a little bit. Hey, you know, I always say if, if uh, you know, if Axl Rose and Slash can, can make amends, I think uh, anybody can, can find their way back to each other. You know what I mean? That would That would have been fucking yeah. sweet. Uh, if that would happen. But when that whole thing, when the whole Blue Ridge thing fell apart, you guys ended up uh, going bowling and, and inviting uh, whoever wanted to come to, to go hang out with you guys. Yeah, we just put a blast out on social media saying, hey, we're going to go here. I mean, by no means, like I almost didn't go. Um, I was just kind of whatever. It was kind of depressed that we didn't got get to play and it was kind of like man we drove all that way i brought my wife who doesn't really go to many shows so she was kind of let down but uh after she took a nap it was kind of like <laughs> let's just go and have some fun so we went and had some fun by no means that i touch one bowling ball that night but there was definitely some 
fun to be had. You know, there was a lot of fans that were from all over the country and stuff. So at least they got to hang out with us and do some dumb stuff, sing karaoke. That was pretty funny. Jared always does his uh, just bust a move. So that was classic. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. It's, uh, it's the same thing with my fiance. It's like she's uh, a little grumpy or whatever. And it's like, hey, go take a nap. And, and then it's all good, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was just one of those weird things because that was a long, long, long drive for nothing. You know, and she yeah. could have, you know, not, not wasted PTO. But, you know, she decided to make the best of it with us. And so we just went and had a good time, hung out with the guys, hung out with fans and had some cocktails. You've told this uh, this story in another interview. I, I I've only heard it just the one time. I don't think uh, too many people know, but uh, obviously you used to play hockey growing up, and I know uh, you won best defenseman or whatever. But then, like years later, you came across a a stat book or something, and it was the same trophy that you had won. They had changed uh, the name. Uh, they named it after a guy that you knew who ended up uh, dying in your front yard. So I'll let you tell the story, but that's that's the gist of it, right? That's uh, that's a good summary. Yeah, no, I was upstairs playing video hockey game with another hockey friend of mine that I played with, and uh, it basically felt like an earthquake, which obviously isn't very common around Michigan. And uh, shit, I didn't turn my phone off. Um, but so it felt like an earthquake, and there was like a weird sound. So I looked out the window, um, and I could see a light just in the yard not knowing what the hell it was and there was still some sound so we ran downstairs and ran outside um and i saw it was a motorcycle on its side just tires still spinning all that stuff and uh, i saw a dude on the sidewalk and so i you know i'm that's shit that i love is running to help and see what's going on so i ran right out and uh realized it was another hockey player uh a couple years older than me um but i went to go check his pulse and then i realized like his head wasn't connected to his body anymore the skin was oh but he God. was you know his head was like almost upside down so he was dead and then uh his friend was in the street um he ended up dying too he was looking for his face it was it was fucking nuts but yeah that's the that's the thing is when i won defenseman of the year it's just like, hey, here's a trophy, your best defenseman. Sweet. Like you said, years and years and years later, when I went to go get my skates sharpened, they have, you know, like the high school book of, you know, records and teams, you know, whatever. And so I came across uh, my year because, of course, selfishly, I was trying to look at what I did and all that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it said best defenseman. And the trophy, which when I won it, was just best defenseman. But when I looked at the stats, obviously, after – I played, they named that trophy after the guy that was decapitated that I took his pulse and, you know, was acquaintance with. But yeah, so it was named after the guy that died in my yard and probably no one knew that. Wow. That, oh my God. I can't even imagine seeing something like that. I remember when I was probably about that, I was in high school, I think, and I was in, uh, I was at the drive through with my mom, you know, not like a, a restaurant drive through, but like a, a, we get like beer and, and stuff like that. <laughs> And um, I was sitting there, and I, I see this guy, like, outside on the road, just, like, in midair, just, like, flying. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then a couple seconds later, there's a motorcycle just sliding across the road. And I'm like, oh, my God. So we, we pull out of the drive-thru, and somehow this fucking guy, he's, he's up, and he's, he's already on the phone calling. And, uh, you know, I mean, he was, he was a little bloodied up and everything, but I'm just like, Oh my God! You know and those things terrify me. We had a, a family friend when I was a kid who who died in a motorcycle accident, and you hear about that stuff way too often. But those things are terrifying. Yeah, I'm. You know, as cool as I think it is, I'm just glad I don't know how to <laughs> drive a motorcycle. Yeah, no kid. <laughs> I'd be having I'd be having way too much fun, and I've seen yeah, I've seen some stuff like that too. That's crazy. You saw that? I've never seen a guy flying midair. Luckily, I didn't see Evan flying because. He broke his neck on one of those electrical poles, and oh like he almost God. broke the entire pole in half. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So, but they were they were they were drinking and driving, so there you go. Don't do that. Yeah, I mean, did that did that like fuck you up at all? Or, or I mean, I, I would imagine at least it did short term. But uh, I mean, nothing. Uh, I've drunk. seen so much. I've seen so much weird stuff, like not just macabre, but I've seen so much stuff. I'm kind of numb to anything, but no, I mean, I was like, so except my mom and my best friend were on the porch, just crying, weeping. 
and I was out there when the cops and whatever showed up, they let me put the flares up so they could like tend to work. And they were like, oh. so I put the flares around everything to seal off. So I was fully involved. So Jesus, dude, that's, that's just me. That's, that's insane. And the, the poor lady, the poor lady that they hit, she was inside the house just bawling. You know, she didn't know they were dead yet, but I lived on a street corner and she was just going out to make a left-hand turn and they were just coming and, you know, they just, she was going out to make a left-hand turn. Apparently they didn't have the light on. It got switched on, but even if whatever she pulled out to make a left and they just hit the hood, went flying and one broke his neck and the other one probably went a good 200 feet sliding down the road. Oh my God. Came up with no. Yeah. And when he sat up, you know, like Michael Myers in the movie where he's like laying down and then he sits (laughs) up and turns his head. Yeah. This guy did. This guy did that, but he didn't have a face, and he started patting around on the ground looking for his nose and shit. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Actually, Jared and I were just talking about it the other day um, when Jared was going to U of M to become a med student. Um, he got me a job because I was just a loser. And so we worked a midnight shift with attempted suicide you know, patients and stuff, and I forgot that he actually worked with the same dude, but there was a guy um, that tried – he tried killing himself with a shotgun and he only shot the lower part of his face was gone. So he only had cheekbones and eyes. And so we both sat with him and he'd like, you know, try offering the gauze. So we'd have to like take his hand away and all that. But it was just kind of odd to hear Jared recall the same story that I have, but from his perspective and stuff. And so wow. I've seen a lot of crazy. That. That's when I kind of decided that I didn't want to work that job anymore because I knew that, uh, if he wanted to go and he's going to have to live like that the rest of his life, then I mean, who am I to force him to live if that's what he wanted? <laughs> sure, I'm glad he yeah. survived and is living, you know, actually turns out random dumbass story. He actually ended up being a Taproot fan too. No kidding. Not knowing. That this is the, the, yeah, the shotgun I mean, guy? Yeah, they called him, they called him half face. Um, <laughs> I don't know the guy at all, but, uh, I don't know how he ended up there, and but we used to have a merch guy that you know spent a little bit of time away um, behind some bars and stuff, and so uh, I guess they were they were in the same facility, if you will. Um, but he knew exactly who he was. He knew the story. Dude has no idea who we were, you know, at that time, and still probably doesn't. But uh, he knew the story of him trying to kill himself with a shotgun. You know, he had that same thing. They tried to fix it up, but uh, no, they called him half head and he turned out to be a Taproot fan. <laughs> kind of wow. like the the Evan the Evan story. Yeah, that's insane, man. So, uh, yeah, moving on. I know uh, obviously a, a handful of shows left to close out this year, but what's next for Taproot going into 2024? Is is the band kind of kind of going to go, gonna go uh, silent again, or uh, are you hoping to, to keep it a little more active this time around? Uh, I think we're going to continue to do similar type stuff. We're starting to get offers. We got the big one in Las Vegas. I don't remember what month. Yeah, yeah what I just, that just so. got announced this week. Sick New World with Slipknot and System of a Down yeah. and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that'll be cool. Um, so, you know, I think we're going to try to plan a couple shows around that while we're on that side of the country and if more random offers come our way, we'll do it. But as a as of now, come mid December, I'm gonna have to look for a job unless we start getting some dates because I'm not exactly helping out much right now. <laughs> I'm having fun, but oh wow! Well, I'm hoping uh, you're gonna be in my neck of the woods in a couple of weeks in uh, Cleveland. I'm hoping to make it out. I don't nice. think. I, well, for one, I've never seen the band play live, but I did. I, I'm 99% sure it was you guys that I met in a mall when I was a little kid, probably, uh, I don't know, maybe like 2003, 2004 or something. And, uh, I, okay. yeah, cause I, I have like a, uh, I don't even know where it is, but I have one of those like little sampler, uh, CDs. Like it wasn't a taproot album, but it was maybe like a single or something in one of the cardboard sleeves. And, uh, I think I right. like a picture of me with you guys or something. I was probably like eight years old or something. So it'd be good to finally see the band live. <laughs> <laughs> well that'll be awesome i hope you can make it out it'll be fun either way i mean we love cleveland i love bone thugs so i can't go i can't go against cleveland ever yeah it's crazy about uh is it is it uh crazy bone that was in the that's in the hospital 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't really follow the news feed like recently or right now. Uh, I don't know if he's still in or not. Uh, I mean, this is like just recently, like two weeks ago. I think it was Crazy Bone was in. Uh, he's in like a coma or something. It was like a life threatening condition, I believe. I'm not not uh, oh. overly educated on it, but yeah, it was it was crazy. I, I think he's still in the hospital. Maybe I could be wrong on that, but yeah, it was crazy. Because they were just here because they named, uh, I think they named a, a street after them or, or something, uh, not not all that long ago, just a few months ago or something. So What'd they name it, East 1999 or something? <laughs> I honestly don't know. But uh, yeah, no, Cle- <laughs> Cleveland's great. I think that's one of the shows that uh, has the low, uh, low ticket warning. So it'll be a great show and uh, yeah, hoping to make it out. But um, yeah, man, well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Just please promote the record and tell people to check out Favorite Song with Elias. That's the one I kind of want to get traction just because I think it makes people smile. Well, and Non Point is so great. I think Elias is going to be on here uh, on next week or something. And that's they're just such a fucking good band, man. And it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. I say this all the time, but, you know, a lot of these bands, like, you know, they get known for their older stuff and whatever, and that's what people want to hear. But, you know, they still continue to be able to carve out a career based off of new music. And, you know, Nonpoint still yeah. does really well at Active Rock Radio, and they put a new yeah. single out, and a great band. Absolutely. Yeah, and they're they're sweethearts, too. It was cool. Um, but Elias, we've done, we've done it twice. He came out once at the Machine Shop, and then the one time we've played with them since collaborating, we've played with them at – taste of madison and wisconsin he came out for that one too so it's been pretty cool um i love those guys and yeah i don't i don't really have anything negative to say they've always been really sweet and rob's the one that got me in touch with elias so i love those guys maybe a non-point taproot tour in 2024 definitely possible um you know as long as it's not two months (laughs) straight (laughs) we'll be down for sure you, n- you never know what could happen by then. Um, but no, I mean, definitely more shows. And the funny thing is, is uh, they're playing the machine shop in Flint, Michigan um, in December on the 15th, I think. And it sold out. So they're adding the 16th. But uh, I've talked to Elias about it. And it's funny because, you know, with my guys just preparing for the three days in a row, we weren't just going to force feed, you know, for people that were there for two or three days. We didn't want to just play the same set list. So we had to like relearn 25 songs instead of just the 15 or 16. Oh, wow. And so, and with you know, Taylor, our new guitarist, even though he's killer, it's like, man, Oh, that's a lot to learn. And so, you know, there was a lot of having to help go through, but he, he's been nailing it and stuff, but now we're kind of going back to just, okay, focus on these songs. Don't worry about the random ones. Like we did the love without you with, uh, Audrey, the country, you know, she came out yeah. and that was the only time we've ever played that song. And that's the only time we've ever played with her. And we didn't even sing that song together. Like I said, mine were scratch vocals. And honestly, hers actually were too, because Tim, the producer for her and the studio owner that I work at, um, he just had her come in and lay down some ideas. And then she hit some really cool notes because Tim just always has random, you know, try this, try that, try this. And so I ended up just moving her stuff around flipping it in and it actually worked really good like you know we didn't sit down and go oh try this you know take two whatever it was just like i had her scratch vocals put them in my scratch vocals and it sounds awesome so it's kind of like you said rough but cool yeah well it it works really really well together i mean not really uh not necessarily something you might expect from taproot but uh i i I, (laughs) yeah it works really really well it's a great song well, thank you. And that was like one of my go-to things. Like I said, you know, that was the one I wrote a long time ago, but yeah. that was my every rose has its thorn. And I thought it would be so <laughs> funny. Like who would have thought Taproot had a guitar solos? So I threw some in there. It was fun. Well, uh, Steve, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, check out Taproot when they're on the road. Check out the new record, Scissors. And uh, yeah, man, thanks again. I appreciate it. <laughs>